Welcome to the golden age of hard rock, where I'm bringing hard rock goodness to your dirty little ear holes. Hey rockers, today's episode is all about the 70s band Angel. Now I know the words Angel and the 70s probably conjures up thoughts of Charlie's Angels, Jacqueline Smith, Farrah Fawcett, and Kate Jackson. But I'm here to talk about the band Angel. Simply put, this band does not get the attention it deserves. Angel was formed in the mid-70s in Washington, D.C., by Punky Meadows and Mickey Jones. Angel employed a dazzling mix of prog, glam, hard rock, and power pop. I'd say that Angel was primarily known for their outrageous, flamboyant, glam stage presence, white satin outfits, and equally over-the-top stage shows. All of that combined to make them one of the most colorful arena rock bands from 1975 to 1981, when the group officially called it quits. In my opinion, Angel, along with The Babies, Stars, New England, and to a lesser extent, Rex, are five bands that just needed to keep it together a little longer until MTV came on the scene. I really believe that MTV would have helped propel these five bands to the top. Each of them had the talent, the songs, the showmanship, and the look. They just needed the mass exposure that MTV could have provided. I'm going to be going over the five studio albums that Angel released during 1975 to 1979. After I'm done, I'll share my ranking of these five albums, and I'll give you my all-time top ten Angel songs. So let's do it. Angel's first as in debut album, was the self-titled Angel, released on Casablanca Records. In fact, all five of Angel's albums would be released on Casablanca Records, which was also the home of Kiss at the time. Angel was released on October 27, 1975. The debut album was recorded at Wally Heider Studios in Hollywood, California, and it was produced by the team of Derek Lawrence and Jim Sullivan. For the debut, the band consisted of Frank Domeno on vocals, Punky Meadows on guitar, Greg Jafria on keyboards, Mickey Jones on bass, and Barry Brandt on drums. The album consisted of eight songs and opens with Tower, which would become the perfect show opener for the band's live shows. You've also got Long Time, Rock and Rollers, Broken Dreams, Mariner, Sunday Morning, On and On, and the instrumental Angel. The debut peaked on the Billboard album charts at number 156 and had two singles of which neither charted. Rock and Rollers was released in the U.S. and On and On was released in the U.K. My pick for the best song on the album is the seven-minute prog opener, Tower, with a close second being On and On. Angel's second album was Hell of a Band. Using some slang profanity in the title was perhaps a move to dirty up the image of the band a bit. Hell of a Band was released on June 15, 1976, repeating the process with the same producers, Derek Lawrence and Jim Sullivan, and using the same studio as the debut, Wally Hyders in Hollywood. The lineup also stayed the same, with everyone from the debut returning for Hell of a Band. Hell of a Band offered up nine new songs, Feeling Right, The Fortune, Any Way You Want It, Dr. Ice, Mirrors, Feelings, Pressure Point, Chicken Soup, and Angel Theme. Yes, there was an Angel Theme on the debut, but this one is different. Hell of a Band peaked on the Billboard album charts at number 155. That's one notch higher than the debut. Interestingly, the band only released singles from Hell of a Band in Japan. And those were Any Way That You Want It and Feeling Right. No singles in the U.S. or U.K. or anywhere else. The song Mirrors gets my vote for the best song on this album. Angel's third album was On Earth As It Is In Heaven. As far as album covers go for Angel, this is my pick for best album cover. 
It was the debut of the Angel logo. The logo is something that's called ambigrammatic, which is just a fancy word that means the logo looks exactly the same if you turn it upside down. Now, how many hours do you think we all collectively spent examining this logo in detail to see if we could find any change when flipping it upside down? Quite a bit would be my answer. On Earth As It Is In Heaven was released on June 15, 1977. This time, the band went for a big gun for producer in Eddie Kramer. Eddie had just finished up back-to-back -back albums for Kiss in Rock and Roll Over and Love Gun. The album was recorded at Emerald Castle Studios, a real castle in the Hollywood Hills. The original lineup is still intact for heaven, but this would be the final album by Angel to feature Mickey Jones on bass. On Earth As It Is In Heaven gave fans 10 new songs. Can You Feel It, She's A Mover, Big Boy, Telephone Exchange, White Lightning, On The Rocks, You're Not Fooling Me, That Magic Touch, Cast The First Stone, and Just A Dream. Working with Eddie Kramer paid off as Heaven peaked on the album charts at number 76. Two singles would be released from Heaven. That Magic Touch would peak at number 77 in the States, while Telephone Exchange was released in Japan. Just my opinion, but I feel that it was a mistake to not release Telephone Exchange as a single in the U.S. To me, it just screams hit single. But for me, I'm going with Can You Feel It as my pick for the best song on the album. For the first time, though, it was a challenge. There are several great songs on this one. Angel's fourth album is titled White Hot, and that's exactly what it was back in 1978. White Hot is the highest charting album of the five, topping the Billboard album charts at number 55. White Hot was released on January 3, 1978 and it featured yet another change at the producer spot. This time, sitting behind the controls was Eddie Leonetti. White Hot was recorded at the record plant in Los Angeles. Now, this is the first lineup change for the band with the addition of Felix Robinson on bass. Felix replaced founding member Mickey Jones. White Hot presented fans with 10 new songs from Angel. Don't Leave Me Lonely, Ain't Gonna Eat My Heart Out Anymore, Hold Me, Squeeze Me, over and Over, Under Suspicion, Got Love If You Want It, Stick Like Glue, Flying With Broken Wings, You Could Lose Me, and The Winter Song. I already mentioned that White Hot is the highest charting album from Angel. It also has the distinction of having the highest charting single, which would be Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore at number 44. That song is a cover of the Young Rascals song that appeared on their 1966 debut album. I think Angel did it much better. There were also single releases for Flying With Broken Wings and The Winter Song. I'm going with Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore as my pick for the best song on White Hot. Again, hard to pick, several great ones on this album. The fifth and final studio album from the original run of Angel is Sinful. The album was originally called Bad Publicity, and it featured this rare album cover. I'll say, if you have this copy, don't throw it out. It's worth a mint. It's extremely rare. Angel wanted to go in a different direction and shake off the all-white image that they felt were holding them back at the time. Neil Bogart of Casablanca Records wasn't buying it, though, and said he signed Angel, not a punk band. So the cover was reshot. A lot of people consider this the most pop-oriented album of the lot, and many don't care for it. Personally, I love it. Sinful was released on January 1st, 1979. Eddie Leonetti remained on as the producer, and the album was recorded at two studios, The Record Plant in L.A. and Davlin Recording Studio in North Hollywood. The lineup would remain the same as the White Hot lineup. This final offering provided fans with 10 new songs from Angel. Don't Take Your Love, L.A. Lady, Just Can't Take It, You Can't Buy Love, Bad Time, Waited a long time. I'll bring the whole world to your door. I'll never fall in love again. Wild and hot and lovers live on. Commercially, the album was a setback, peaking at number 159 on the Billboard Top 200 for 1979. Only one song was released as a single, and that was Don't Take Your Love, a freaking great song that didn't even chart. Go figure. 
I'm going with Waited a Long Time as my favorite among many on this album. Okay, so now it's time to rank these five records, and I won't keep you in suspense. Here's how I rank them. Number one, Sinful. Two, On Earth As It Is In Heaven. Three, White Hot. Four, The Debut Album. And five, Hell Of A Band. As a bonus, I'm going to give you my top ten favorite songs from Angel. Let's see, over these five albums, Angel put out a total of 47 songs. And here are my top ten. Number one, Waited A Long Time. Number two, Can You Feel It? Three, Lovers Live On. Four, Telephone Exchange. Five, Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore. Six, Don't Take Your Love. Seven, Just Can't Take It. Eight, She's a Mover. Nine, Tower. And ten, Don't Leave Me Lonely. Hey guys, I know that there's a lot of interest in Angel's live album called Live Without a Net. There's just so much going on with this double album that it deserves to have its own video to do it right. If you want to see that happen, let me know about it in the comments. Now, if you've stuck with me this long, here's the reward. A few minutes of cool-ass pics of Angel from back in the day. You guys freaking rock. Thanks for subscribing and smashing the like button. Because without you, there is no golden age of hard rock. Period. Until next time, keep rocking.